by the grace of God, my name is Sister Oju, and um, I have been, you know, watching the program, and I see how progress is going, and um, the teaching, because the more I teach after, I go back, and um, I listen to it, and God is really touching my heart, too, because this school of the spirit is all about you doing what you are teaching. So it's always like a sword to me. After I finish, you know, teaching, I will go back to it. I begin to assess myself. I begin to ask questions. The question is like, God, what I'm saying, am I doing it? Am I not doing it? What are the area I need to add up? What are the area I need to sit up? What are the areas that you are not finding it good for me? You know, so that is why it was a school and and why i love the training is like um it's like you are bringing the word to heal others and the word is also healing you so in these last days god is not after um, us you know coming out to, to teach or to preach that people will hear god is expecting us that are bringing the word to be the first partaker it's like for us to be healed first God is expecting us speaking it. That is why the Bible says that um, the judgment is going to start in the church, in the sanctuary. And the people in the sanctuary are the, the leaders, the, 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 the law leaders, the Bible leader, Bible interpreter, preachers, the people that work at the altar. God wants to judge them first because uh, the time of uh, deception, the time of lies, the time of you know standing in the presence of God and the act and the demonstrates and go free with all sort of sins. The hour has come for judgment of God to, to bring forth all the things we think we can, go, we can do or act and go free. So this school of the spirit have made me to be very conscious that the more I speak on each topic, after I go back to it, I listen to it, and the spirit of God in me will be dictating my, my errors the area I'm good at, the area I'm not good. And I, I pick up in prayers. I started asking God, may I never come out and speak what people will watch. And at the end, that will be uh, a judgment to me. That's you use it to judge me. Because the thing is that it's unfortunate that the preachers and the teachers of the word of God, the, the uh, readers of the word of God, they didn't know that the last day is that everything we speak before people, it will be appear before us and it's going to be used to judge us. That is how bad it is. And people do not know this. And that is why if you know you are not ready to, to do what you are teaching or what you are doing, what you are preaching, it is better for you to quit and ask God to help you because is, that is the first deception that Bible is telling us. That is why it says before you talk about the speck in people's eyes, first of all, remember you have yours. Then begin to work on how to remove yours. Then you begin to, then before focus on removing people's own. So you can't carry poo on you and be speaking, you know, for people to remove theirs while you have yours. So that is all about the Holy Spirit school. And because the more you speak at the end, the Spirit of God will bring it before you and it will be reminding you, you said this, but you don't do it. So I always have instant judgment. When I'm speaking, most times I'll be asking myself, am I saying the right thing? Am I doing this and I'm saying, God, please show me mercy. I don't want you to judge me on this. So this Holy Spirit school is fantastic. I'm so happy for God to give us such a program in this end time. And the only way you will live this kind of level of life or level of checkmating as I'm speaking is the only way you engage in this school. When you engage with this Holy Spirit, he is the one that research. He's the one that pinpoint. He's the one that screen you. He's the one that do all necessary diagnosis to able to tell you the one you are doing right and the one you are not doing right. So by the grace of God today, let's pray and move into what we have for today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, loving God. It's a great opportunity for us to enjoy the food you have bring before us. Jesus, when you are telling the woman of Samaria, you tell, him, you tell her that your forefathers, they eat the manna in the wilderness and they die, they perish. But listen, woman, this water I'm talking about is the water of life. When you drink it, you will not die. You will live forever. Lord, this is the water that we are sharing today. 
May we drink it and we live forever. We really want to live with you. We really want to stay with you in the heaven in your place. We want to be there forever with you. We want to witness that, that kingdom, that mansion you promise you've gone to prepare for us. And that is why we are so much embraced in this school of the spirit. We are the Holy Spirit. We take over us and prepare us and make us to be what you want us to be and prepare us to to be able to, to you know to put all the necessary ingredients in us to be able to qualify to stay with you father right now i hand over to you come and bless our soul again and bless the souls of people that in this program people doesn't want to engage because it's not a prophetic where you'll be telling people their ordeals in this last day satan have made people not to agree to believe the truth of the truth of the word of god and on this father we ask thee about father come and glorify yourself come and show yourself powerful in this great program Abba father as i hand over to you in jesus mighty men we pray amen okay so when you think about unforgiveness god is really want us to learn this word unforgiveness that is the way i bring it here the way i bring it here number one what is the meaning of unforgiveness because this unforgiveness bring malice from malice it bring by backing from by backing it bring you into memory so these are the three point but one is the one that bring forth the three so that is why we're going to bring the three together as a package so remember refining process so we have these things in us so as we have it in us god wants each one that bear fruit of others to be refined and removed out of us these are what is called refining process so when we start the school god will begin to pick those things and you begin to refine them you begin to remove them. And these are the act of what God doesn't want. So when this kind of thing starts, what God wants is, when, when we start the school, what God will do is he, he will take us inside the machine, which I called encounter, for those that are following us all this while. So this encounter is what we call refining. And that is why when we see that encounter is a machine, is an engine, where God puts us, to be able to bring out what is in us and able to grind it, sieve it, and bring the real model, or bring the real product. So this is why encounter, we, we see it that we need it. We see it as a tool. We see it as an equipment that God is using to, to do us good. And this makes us that when we're having an encounter, we don't think of who gives us encounter, what he does. And, and this, he helps us to see that when you begin to understand that encounter is coming for our own benefit, for your own benefit, it will not give you room to begin to have this unforgiveness. So by the time we finish treating this unforgiveness, you will not see the mess we are into. As the people of God, as the children of God, even as an individual, unforgiveness is very deadly. So the way I put it, as I said earlier, that unforgiveness brings forth marriage, from malice is going to backbiting, from backbiting you see yourself murmuring, and also you lead into hating. So I put it then, what is the meaning of unforgiveness? Unforgiveness means when someone offends you, and you too refuse to have a compassion, or have mercy, to accept whatever the person have done to you, that is the meaning of unforgiveness. When someone offended you, you refuse to have compassion, or have mercy, or to accept the pain, so when you refuse to accept the pain of what the person has caused you, that brings forth unforgiveness. When you refuse to show compassion, when you refuse to, you know, to show mercy on whoever have offended you, then that is what is called unforgiveness because it's how bringing unforgiveness, unforgiving what the person have done to you. Second one, unforgiveness. When you talk about unforgiveness, you now, you, I see it again that, it is when it's when someone, you know, when you have in when someone offends you, then you see that you must come first. But you started having emotion. As I mentioned, you may be having mental, you may be having physical, you know, pain. It depends on what the person did to you. So I put it that when you talk about unforgiveness, 
It is when the offenses come, then the offense, whoever must offend you, it will affect you mentally or physical. And it will, it will also affect you emotionally. Then it makes your behavior to change. When you are hurt, your behavior change. Whether positive, whether negative, your behavior change. Then the, the fourth one is that, the third one is that when someone offended you and you refuse to forgive, it causes you bitter. You see yourself with being bitter and this will, will not lead you that you will really want to punish the person. So these are the things unforgiveness does. That is being of unforgiveness. When someone of, offend you, you not look for a way to punish. You look for a way to revenge. You look for a way to, you know, to show the person that he must not go free for what he has done. So these are the meaning of unforgiveness. The fourth one, unforgiveness is a way to grow wide. To grow wide on what? To grow wide when someone is asking you to forgiveness, yet the pain never lets you to go, but you begin to grow wide. You begin to grow more in rot because you are under pain of what someone has done to you. And what unforgiveness does is that it's worsening the pain when you doesn't forgive, when you are being offended and the person does not ask for forgiveness, what it does, the unforgiveness worsens the pain. It makes the pain to, to, to grow wind. Especially when someone did not say, oh, I'm sorry. Or, oh, forgive me for whatever I've done. When you see it, you see that the thing is growing. You begin to nurture it. You begin to nurse it. And you begin to worsen. It may be the level 10 when the thing is done. But because the person did not ask for forgiveness, because there is no room to settle that that time, that is what brings it to be worsened. And as it begins to worsen, it begins to make it so, it, it, it expanded, it will grow. And in making it grow is what causes revenge. And that is what brings anger. Then the next one, I say that unforgiveness is a way we are making, you know, we are giving weight and the cost grudges to comes in. Grumbling comes in. When grudges come in, when grumbling comes in, remember only one thing, you refuse to pay sacrifice of forgiving. You refuse to accept by, by showing mercy or showing compassion or, or forgiving or forgetting. So this now bring the grudges. And when the grudges come, you see, the next thing is that you see yourself entering into bitterness, anger. Then the last one is unforgiveness also, it creates your heart to be hardened. Unforgiveness makes people's heart to be hardened. And whenever your heart is hardened, what happens? You feel angry all the time. Unforgiveness makes you to harden your heart. It makes you to feel angry all the time. And also, it makes you, oh, when you hear the name of the person that offended you or whoever offended you, you feel angry all the time. When the person passes, you just, you know, you sign and just find your way. When the person is coming by the, by the right, you face by the left. When you hear the person speaking, you just pause the voice. You doesn't want to hear the person. Or you just say anything about the person, against the person. And it, it, makes, you, it, make you, it makes you uncomfortable. So all these are the meaning of unforgiveness, especially when you are hurt and the person that hurts you did not say, I'm sorry, or he did not seek for peace. There are so many Bible verses we are going to go, but I want to finish analyzing before we can go to scripture. Then when you, then I now put that, you know, unforgiveness is a pregnant. When you conceive it as a baby, as a pregnant in the womb, there are things it will bring forth. Because when you have that unforgiveness in you, it has occupied, it has taken a space. And when you leave it, as I said, it will begin to grow like a pregnant. And when it begins to grow like a pregnant, look at what it will bring forth. One, anger. You see yourself every time being anger, especially on the person that offended you, on the families. Most times, for example, it may be me that offended you. You see, because I didn't settle it with you, that pregnant of the anger against me, you will not refer to my husband. You refer to my children. You refer to my son. You refer to my daughter. You refer to my family. Only one offense now generates and brings such an evil pregnant that affect the person and affect the person's family, even affect the person's business. That is what unforgiveness can do. 
So that anger will not affect everybody. There are some countries that are revenging fellow countries today because of the anger of what the country has done. There are some families that are repaying other families because of the anger of what their first uh, generation or second generation or the past generation have done. Today, they are still revenging out of the anger. And many of them, when they see themselves in a position, you see how unforgiveness generates. So that anger has been there, it has stored, and it has pregnant. And when the pregnancy has opportunity to shoot, it will bring forth that anger. That anger will now go against whoever must have done that hurt, whoever must have offended you. So, but if that matter is settled, for example, a village versus a village, maybe the past 10, 15 years, this village offended this village, and they have an opportunity to settle it. You see that even in the next 15, 15, 50 years, because they settled it, there will not be avenue for revenge. But I want to tell you, if that matter is not settled, you, the people that started a fight may end it. And if they couldn't resort it, the next five, six, ten years, another people will come forth again and they will want to revenge. They will remember their father was murdered. They remember their mother was murdered. They remember their siblings was murdered. They remember their king was murdered. They remember their families was murdered. They want to revenge because they did not settle it. That is how unforgiveness brings anger. Then, when the pregnancy of anger comes, the next thing is malice. Remember, what causes malice? When someone offends you, he didn't ask you to forgiveness. You did not forgive. The next thing is malice. I don't want to do anything with this person. Let him give me space. Let's, you know, have our boundaries. What causes it? He hurts you. He didn't ask for forgiveness. You didn't give room to forgive. You look away. To give length. That is what it causes. That is the pregnancy. Then after marriage, the next thing, by biting. You will never hear the name of this person and talk anything good. You will begin to look for a way to revenge, to make the person to feel the pain. That is the work of unforgiveness. Because the person hurts you. And you want to look for a way to do what? To buy bite against the person. The pregnancy is still going. The next thing is memory. You bring into memory. Anytime you hear about the person or about the people, you begin to murmur. You begin to like to say something, you know, to exaggerate, to lie against the person or to lie against the situation because you have not forgiven what has conspired. And the anger is still inside. And that anger is the one bringing forth all those things. When you bring that memory, you see yourself all time memory. When you see about the people, sorry, when you hear about the people, when you see the person, you will murmur, you, your countenance change. You may be happy in the morning. You may be happy in that place. Immediately you see or hear about the person, your, 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 your countenance change, your, your thoughts change, your inner mind change because of what I've done in the past. It is very cancerous. Then after the murmur in the next thing, complain. You will begin to complain. You want to tell your friends. You want to cascade the person. You want the family to know about it. There are things that will happen to you. I was talking to one, one woman of God. Um, it happened that the family was against her. And um, they were saying all sorts of things. But at this stage, because she's in this school, she's been going training with God. There are something that the family says against her and against her children. She is a woman filled with the spirit of God. One is that she has forgiven because she told me the encounter and told me, you know what? I'm forgiving them because I know they don't know what they're doing. And she told me, do you know the highest miracle that she did? I said, no. She said, I did not tell my children that thing they did. I know my children. If I tell my children this thing, the generation will never pass. That matter will not end. She hid it within herself. She bear the pain. She paid the sacrifice. She locked it. Nobody hears about it. And the same year, the family was doing something. And she carried her children. They bought things. They went and greeted the family. And the family was shocked. How would you do this person, this kind of thing? Yet she came with her children and to honor us and to pay the homage to us. She paid the price. She knows the damage it will cause if she says such a thing. 
So these are the things I, I say by paying price, accepting that someone have offended you, but forgive, forget it. So it won't pass to children. It won't pass to generation. It won't pass to relationship. It won't pass to children that are yet to be born. If you does not endure and forgive and forget it, you are laying a cause and a lineage of separation and crisis that will cause this murmuring, anger, by biting, complaining. And after that murmuring, the next thing is complaining. You begin to complain. This person do me this. And while you are complaining, you want people to, to sympathize you. And when you complain so much, you see, you started eyeing lies. You started, why you add lies is that you want people to, you know, to, to feel you. You want people to, to, to back you that what you're saying is right. So that is what unforgiveness does. Then the next thing after, from the complaining, you bear the, 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 the bitterness. I, I treat on bitterness last time. You see the cause of bitterness. And when you see yourself into bitterness, the next thing you land into inward restlessness. No peace. Your heart, your inward will be on fire. Every time you are, you are cranking your body. No joy, no happiness. You are moody. Because of you have not forgiven and forgot what have conspired, what have happened. So these are the pregnancies of unforgiveness, what it will bring forth. And when all those things is coming forth, and you know, the last one, when you have the, I, I, the way I put it, when you have such a recent um, restlessness, what does it happen? What brought it? It will now bring a thought of revenge. When your heart is restless, you know, you are troubled. You, you are looking for a way to ease off. You are looking for a way to revenge when the heart is not settled. And when you're looking for a heart of it, especially when the person does not ask for forgiveness, when the person does not show remorse. And when you started having the thought of revenge, the next thing you will begin, you will never give a, a position to have compassion for the person. And when this thing is happening, it makes you unhappy. And the next thing you begin to look for, how to offend the troubler who have offended you. This is what unforgiveness can do. And you can't have the time for pray for them. It makes you, when you hear about them, you'll be so excited. When you hear something that happened to them, any evil that happened to them, you say, that sends them right. You will remember exactly what they have done to you. You will begin even to judge them and say that, in fact, it was God revenging on my behalf. It is good. Let them face it. They did me this. They do me that. So this is a work of unforgiveness. And this thought of revenge for have made so many people to land in the prison. Because of what they have done to them, they did not forget, they did not forgive. And every time the heart is angry, the heart is boiling, the next thing is, how do I revenge? And the every little opportunity that comes, that is why you see things happening in society today. It is what someone has done to someone else. And that person sees the opportunity. He will back under. He will go under the, the, the opportunities to revenge. And you'll be asking, is it this little thing that caused this problem? You will never know it was someone you have offended. Sorry, somebody that offended you that wants to use the opportunity. Somebody you have offended wants to use the opportunity, you know, to hurt you. Then there is what I call actions of people when they refuse to forgive. And this action, what it creates in our life is one, when you refuse to forgive, it creates evil words, evil thoughts in our mind. And what you will do all the time is that you will look for a way to be looking for who to offend you with all manner of thoughts. You see thought, thought is very dangerous. When you begin to see thoughts, I call it projection. Any little time it will, it will sink. It's like somebody they throw arrow. So when they throw the arrow on you, you grab it. And you know that the thought enter. And it is evil thought. And that evil thought will begin to give you mind of, what do I say against this person? Just to, to make it, let the person feel it. What do I do so that this person will feel hot too? Because they make you hot. You want them to feel hot too. That is the action of the people that is unforgiving. Then number two, close that door. Then number two, it creates the keys on the table. Number two, it creates, it, number two, it creates you in the area of mocking, accusing, and quick to start fights. 
You see, when you're offended, you have to accuse the person. Number two, you have to make mockery of the person. Like, for example, when we are youth, when someone offend you, you know, as youth vibe, and um, you come across the person, you begin to make mockery of the person. Sometimes you accuse the person of what he did not do. And nobody wants to be accused. But at that level of accusing the person, the next thing fights. Because when you begin to accuse someone for what he does not do, just in the, in the name we want to revenge, you, the next thing you see fight because the person didn't do the thing and he or she want to prove that he didn't do it. Why are you telling me this? Why are you saying that I did it? Did it, did it the next thing it cause fight. So unforgiveness bring fighting. And that fighting is the things that someone did not do. When you say the person do it, he won't want to hold it. And that is the sin that is compiled in the heart. We are talking of the causes of unforgiveness. Then the third one, it creates you to always remember the past. When you are not forgiving anyone, it always remember the past. Any little thing you remember what I've done, you remember what they did. But all those things is costing more, it's eating us up. Anything that will happen to you that you keep remembering the past, remove it. It makes, it, it cuts your age. Because when you are under stress all time, it, it, you're, you're eating inner mind. You are eating physical mind. You are eating your emotion. You are eating your brain. You are always sober. You are always silly. You are always unhappy. You are always moody. That cuts your age. It makes you to die before your time. That is the cause of unforgiveness. Another one, it creates you to be judging the person all time. You'll be judgmental. When you hear, oh, this person, this thing happened to him, you take it by, by yourself. You take it personal. Your mouth, to 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 you will even say what the person have never think in mind, talk less of doing it. Because of the little thing you had about the person, you put fuel on the fire. Because the person had offended you or the people have offended you time past. These are the causes of unforgiveness. And when you begin to remember what they have done in the past, it means you have not forgiven. And this can make you to even create more harm. And when you begin to judge people, when you begin to be happy, when things happen to that person and you are happy, I want you to know that something may happen to you and other people will be happy with you. Being judgmental to the people that offended you. The next one, it will create gossip, complain about the person that hurt you. Look at how it happened. Creating gossip and complain. You know, when you hear about the person, you will open mouth, you will gossip, you will lie, you will say all sorts of things. And you see yourself everywhere you are, you'll be cascading some that person's name. The people that are around you may be believing what you're saying. That is why people can open mouth and lie. People can open mouth and forge things and say it. But you won't know that that thing they're saying is a big lie. Why? Because that person hurt them. And so they're looking for a way to say something that will finish the person too. Igbo people say, no, 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 no. So you did something. You said something. They want to revenge. They want to say it to hurt you too. That is why you can hear things about someone online. The news will be everywhere. But that thing is a lie. Somebody just forge it and throw it in the air. And these are the kind of things I've like, taken a lot of people to prison because you lied against someone, you forged something, you give false uh, um, information against someone. But the person that are doing it is because of inside, is hurt because of what they have done to him or her. So the next thing he creates is that this unforgiveness, honestly, it causes you to even lose your job. I tell you, unforgiveness can make you to lose your job. Then the next one, it creates, the last one, it creates lies, lies. You'll be lying because you will like the story to look good, to look real. So that people can, you know, accept that what you're saying is true. So you put in salt and pepper and crayfish on the story and make it so, so real. And anytime you want to tell the story, you tell it, to, you know, adding those lies makes it to look uh, real and make it to look flesh, something that just happened. And this may be something that happened five, one year, 10 years, 15 years, long past. But anytime you bring it, you make it to look so real 
so that people will believe what you're saying. These are the things unforgiveness can do. Then another thing I said is unforgiveness is like a, it's a, like a disease, HIV. It, it was like a cancer, what it can do. It can spread like a cancer disease. Number two, it can affect relationship. Look at friends. A friend offended you. He doesn't give, give room to, to settle. And before you know it, it may be a neighbor that offended you. He doesn't give room to settle. It may be a, a good neighbor that when your soul, because it's possible that you can be cooking, you won't remember that your salt has finished. Like last time I was cooking. Unfortunately, I didn't have salt. It was midnight. I said, wow, how can I stop this cook food? If here is a place you can, oh, neighbor, can I have a small salt? I would have gone. But here is everybody's on his own. I have to wake my son to go to the uh, store and get me salt. So, but in our place, is a place you have neighbors. Oh, Mama Nkechi, oh, Mama Victor, please, let me just have a little salt. Or a little pepper. My food is almost done. I check my, 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 um, my rubber, my cup. I couldn't find salt or pepper. Likewise, the person also asks from you when he's in need. So, but when this, you know, unforgiveness entered and he built this cancerous problem, you will be in need of that pepper or salt. You can't get it because it has broken the relationship between you and your friend and your neighbor. It may be your neighbor that you always stay with her. You see that what devil is doing is that he gives you unforgiveness so that you will cut off the relationship. Though you can't benefit from your friend, the friend cannot benefit from you again. Look at what Satan has done to human beings. It may cause you that your, that your neighbor or your friend is the one helping you to drop you a job in your office. When this thing happens, you cannot have free ride anymore. Look at what Satan has done to us. A little thing that you can settle so you can still have the benefit. The enemy will cut off relationship. It may be that the neighbor is the one helping you to drop your children to school or take you to market. When this thing starts, nobody can help you anymore. It keeps you in that bondage, unforgiveness. Some people will feel, oh, is it because he's helping me? Anyway, I can stay without being helped. Okay, you will you'll be in pain. You'll be suffering it. What you will do in 30 minutes, you will do it in 10 minutes. What you do in 30 minutes, you do it in 10 hours. But if someone helps you as usual, in less than your time, it makes your age last. Devil have cheated us enough. So another thing is that it can make you to break your marriage. So many marriages is broken today because of the past sin. My husband did this that time. You know this time, I'm not going to take it. Oh, my wife did this that time. He repeated it. You know what? Well, that's the end of it. Anger that is stored inside. Unforgiveness that is stored inside. It may be that that time the, your wife did that. The, what she did that time was so big. But you're looking for opportunity so that you strike. A little thing she will not add on it. The fire. And you remember all those ones she did. And you bring it to the table. You did this last time. I, I did not, I did, you think I forgot. I didn't forget. And now you did this again. That's the end of it. Likewise, the husband. Marriages today cannot stay because nobody is ready to tolerate each other. This one will remember. Oh, I, I, saw, I, remember, I, I, I remember my husband cheated me on the, 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 the time. Oh, I remember my wife cheated me on the time. Oh, I remember, look at what this man did. He did the act of wickedness. I remember he didn't take care of the children. He didn't did, did, did. I remember when this man has money, doesn't give me. Now I'm in a position. He cannot see my money. I remember when my husband, uh, when my, my, my husband is seeing money, uh, he doesn't see money. Now he see money. Now he doesn't take care of me. No problem. I will revenge. You look for a way to revenge. This is what this thing can cause in our life. Then the next one, if you can break your marriage, it can make you, you know, it, will, it can make you to avoid your friends because the bitterness and your attitude will change. When you are being bitter, when you are angry, when you are not forgiving people around you, the next thing you see, your attitude begin to change. Your people around you, they will be feeling your, your character is very weird to them. Everybody will, you know, to be avoiding you. And that is why some people can't keep friends. They can't, you can't last in a relationship. You can't have longer friends relationship. A little time, you and this person, next day you break. The next time, within one year, you have made 10 songs, 20 of friends. That is a bad one. 
you must learn how to keep long relationship. And that may come, that will happen when you learn how to forgive and learn how not to be angry. Even when you get angry, reconcile, settle it and keep going. That person you think you can't do anything with today may be a God, an angel God will send for you tomorrow. That is how life be. That person you hurt, you say, I cannot say sorry, I cannot settle within. They will be the person that will save your life in the next minute. God makes everybody to be a God to each one. I can be a God to you, a small God. You can be a God to me tomorrow. So that is how God created that we might keep change, helps our neighbors, our friends, our communities. It may be this person turn today to help. It may be next person turn to help tomorrow. So that is why when you are in pain, when someone offends you, make it a settled. Settle it and wait for what tomorrow will come for. But if you refuse to settle it, what is coming tomorrow will not give you room to settle it. And it may cost a lot of hands. This thing has caused, um, it, it caused a lot of people to begin to treat fellow people poor because they felt, oh, I was treated poorly. I was treated unfair because of that. I will treat this person this way. People begin to receive, you know, bad wickedness attitude of what they did not do, but you want to pour the anger on them. That is so bad. The generation that have done that have passed. Now you are wickeding these children that were born without acting anything, without doing anything bad. That is a very bad one. These have caused a lot of nations and communities in a war, in a fight today because of what have trespassed in the past. So why do we pour anger on someone that did not offend us? For example, I always tell people, whenever I want to go for visa, you know the prayer you'll be praying because the Western world, they don't, they don't carry... They don't carry stress. The, the, the anxiety is much on them. So when you want to go for visa, your prayer should be God, any visa counselor, any visa officer, may that person never have any issue. That particular morning you are going for the visa. That is the prayer I tell people to pray. If the person have a problem and appear in that office that morning, the, the thing you'll be hearing, next time, thank you for applying. Next time, you can apply later. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, thank you for applying. You can come back later. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Thank you for applying. You can apply this time. He's just pouring the anger. Maybe the girlfriend or the boyfriend offended her or him. He will pour the anger on you. And that day is a bad day for the person. So it's good for you not to pour your anger on other people because of what they have done to you. And what is causing again, it kills attitude of love on you. When this cancer or this HIV of unforgiveness comes, you won't give room to love again. Why? The one you loved have, you know, have not uh, show positive. The one you love offended you. The, the one you love have, have not returned love back to you. Therefore, I will never love again. I will never show love anymore. The one I've done is enough. I've been trying my best all time to show people good love. But this time, nobody is showing me love. I will learn how to show wickedness. I won't even practice this love anymore. In fact, love does not favor me. What favor me is the wrath and anger and revengeful. That is where you see yourself. You see how you build. You see how the devil take over you. You won't give chance to love because someone you love does not uh, uh, appreciate it or does not result positive. Because of that, you end in loving. And remember, when you end in loving, you cannot be loved. Then the last one on this is that it's what's in the situation and make you to start withdrawing yourself from people to avoid being hot again. That is why you see people that are always moody. They give space. They want to be themselves. They want to stay by themselves. I don't want to talk with people. I don't want to interact with people. I don't want to mingle with people because I don't want to be hot again. And you be yourself. That is not a good one. That is the cause, the, what the, the counselor's disease that this thing can cause. Then the last one is the way to heal unforgiveness. Number one, confront whenever offended. Whenever you're offended, confront it. Bring it to the table. Number two, give room for settlement. Give room to settlement. Many people, they are being hurt. And when they come for the construction, they say, no, 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 enough. You have done it enough. You did this last time. You did that. that, that. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. Please, I don't want anymore. You see. The person offended you, he noticed he offended you, he called for settlement. You say, no, 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 no. 
The next thing you say, oh, you are not serious. You are not repented. You will do it again. That is what husbands and wives do. That is break their marriages. Oh, I, you did it last time, I forgave you. You did this, did it, and now you come back again. That is the way you want to deceive me. No, I cannot. You take his children, pim, and leave the, leave the marriage. The husband will be asking for forgiveness. The wife may be asking for, no, 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 no. There's no room for settlement. Because you've done that next, last time. You did it, you did it. What's this for? It's horrible. Then the next way to, to, to heal this forgiveness is, remember you can hurt someone tomorrow. So when you remember you can hurt someone tomorrow, then when somebody hurts you, take it and bring it to the table and settle it. Because the same thing that happened, somebody did to you, you may, did it, you may do it to somebody tomorrow. So, so when someone do this to you, then think of what of if I do that thing to somebody tomorrow. So the way you are being treated right, fairly, we now give you opportunity. When you do that to someone tomorrow, you can be treated fairly too. That is how life is. Then another way is prayer. Prayer does the job. When you see you are being eaten by this unforgiveness, bring it to prayer. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit in this school of the Spirit. Bring, you know the thing is there. What do you do? You can settle it. You can help yourself. Then bring it to the helper. Who knows how to trash it? Then use prayer. Begin to bind the Spirit. Use spirit of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness, you always because the demon will remember you. Oh, how he did it, uh, what he said. Uh, 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 you know, you keep counting and counting. So when the spirit, the thought come, rebuke, resist, and say, Satan, go, you go, go, go behind me, idiot. And then, and if you rebuke the spirit, then you have your peace. If not, when he comes, <laughs> he will settle and begin to give it to you. Another way to heal this unforgiveness is. Pay price and sacrifice like Jesus did. Learn how to forgive and forget. Pay it as a sacrifice. Pay it as a price. Jesus did by example. So learn how to forgive and forget. If you know that is a sacrifice, if you know that is a price you can pay for fellow human being, then give it out. And when you give it out, tomorrow someone can give it out for you. But when you refuse to give it out, remember as someone offend you, you offend also someone there. So the way you take it as a sacrifice, the way someone else will take it as a sacrifice for you. The last one, but not the least one, say, remember, if you did not forgive, don't expect yourself to be forgiven. Now we're going to the scripture. The first one, Mark 11, what is this saying? He say, if you forgive men their sin, then your own will be forgiven. This is Jesus' principle. And if Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. That means it's all about what I just said in a couple minutes ago. So it is what you give, you will receive back. And so many people doesn't know that indeed, this is a law of God. The thing it works like, it's like, it's so real. The more like my life, I love helping people. All my life is how, what do I do to impact in people's life? When I'm doing it, I'm not doing it. That's, I doesn't do things to, to get something from you. I, I try to, what can I do to, to change people, to impact, to what can I do to bring a change? And my heart is that whenever I do it, I always believe that for some reason, so one day, sometime, someone will do it for my children, even when I don't know. So it's, I see that I'm planting goodies for myself and for my generation. That is what makes me keep good, moving to see what I can do good things to people. And that it works a lot. In my life, I try as much and any way I am, I try to bring people to myself, give my, 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 my accommodation to people to stay with me. You know, a little space I have, I try to manage it with people. Why? I told myself that I may need it tomorrow and it has been working perfectly for me. So many countries have gone in my missionary. I wouldn't know anybody, but I'll be walking in the streets. Angel will appear as a human being. Maybe I've stayed in a hotel. I've, I, have, I have had it a couple times. I can't mention it. And even the day my hotel bill is, is, is going down and I don't have much money. And most times I enter, maybe the first day. In fact, there was a time I've paid up to three, four days and God brought an angel to take me to his home. And the hotel cannot pay me back my money. So I've been experiencing it. So I tell people what I experience. It works. 
And, and also, I see it was in my children. I see them when they go from places, people take them and accommodate them. But I'm sowing that seed, knowing that if I sow the seed, bring people to my place, help them, feed them, shelter them, I expect that wherever I see myself, someone can shelter me and feed me. And it was working for me. When my son was in England, he stayed in someone's house for how many years, in, throughout how many years in university? He didn't pay a dime. It is the seed I'm sowing. So I, I, it's, you have to understand the way God works. That when you accept people the way they are, then they expect people to accept you. Some people will hold their properties. They will hold their house, hold their food. It's only for me and my children. It's only for me and my husband. The accommodation, no, we don't want to work on anyone. When this, some people will say, oh, this person is a demon. This person is a spirit. You don't know that his love will conquer the demon and the spirit and bring the person in and act out of love. And love will destroy, break the wings of the demon. And the demon will be there and the demon will be delivered. And the demon will cast out with the love. When we begin to restrict that kind of thing. So who will you help? Everybody has demon. So that is how life is. Okay, if everybody is a demon to hunt your house, you can't help, you can't accommodate. Okay, <clears throat> back to you. You may see yourself in a place, you need shelter. You will be a demon to people too. People will be scared of you. I don't know you for the first time. I can't bring you to my house. I don't know whether you're, 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 you're a Christian as you say, you're Christian, I'm afraid. Because you're always afraid for people not to come to your place. Well, anywhere you go to, people will be afraid. But when you take the risk, Lord, I'm doing this because I'm born to help and to take care of humanity. What I have is general things for people. Anywhere you find yourself, you must see somebody that will grab you too and put you inside this house without knowing who you are. I've experienced it a couple of times. When I enter the, the family, the person said, Grace, feel free. This is your home. Oh, the food is ready. Go and take food. Somebody I've never met in your life. Somebody I've never dreamed in your life. You bring me into your home. You give me your kitchen. You give me a bedroom. I sleep with them. Oh my goodness, because I'm sowing it and I'm reaping it. So that, that is what Jesus said. If you do not forgive men their sin, remember your own will not be forgiven. So if it doesn't accommodate anyone, no one will accommodate you. That is the law of life. In Matthew 6, verse 14 says, For if you forgive men their sin and their trespasses, then your Father in heaven will be able to forgive you. So if he doesn't forgive, you have your unforgiveness. Tell me how your prayer will cross the ceiling. This is the law of God. So if you want many people, their prayer is not answered because their heart is filled with unforgiveness. And yet you see them going here and there. That's why the pastors are deceiving you. It's the law of God. When you are not forgiving your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your sister-in-law, your family members, your neighbor, your husband, your wife, your friends, your boss, whoever it may be, and you'll be jumping from church to church. You'll be judging to prophet to prophet, pastor. You are wasting your time. That pastor will never do a miracle. If that pastor prayed your, your, his prayer answered and worked for you, means the word of God is in vain. The, 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 the good pastor, will, God will show the good pastor. If the pastor is the real pastor, he will see that you are not forgiving people that offended you. He will take you back to scripture. He will send you back home for reconciliation. That is what we call transparency in this ministry, in this Holy Ghost school. Go and settle and then pour out what you, 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 you used to cover yourself, that cancer that filled your life. Go and pour it out. Then you now come back. You and God will have a place to sit. Then you start the matter. If you want God to judge for you, learn how to forgive and bring the matter to him. Then God will take it from your hands and go ahead of you. Forgiveness is a very big tool. The next one is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It said, be kind to one another, showing compassion and forgive one another. Showing compassion, showing mercy to people, knowing that the same thing they did to you, you can do it to someone else. Who tell you they can't do such a thing? You can do it. It's offense. Somebody may trigger you. You will act what you don't expect you can act. And that person that will hurt you, it may be you that did something that makes it to hurt you. People can offend. There are people, the attitude is so horrible. There are people, their life, they know how to make someone annoyed. And when you make someone annoyed, the person acts, you refuse to forgive. You forget you are the one that causes it. Some people don't know how to talk. A little word that comes to your mouth like a poison. When, when you enter someone's ear, it seems a bomb to someone's ear. And it triggers the mind of the person. And it causes. The, weak, the, the, the bitterness and the word will be ringing to that person look at the way he said it, look at what he said look at how he talked to me Look at how he did it. and that will begin to generate a lot of things 
Then Romans says, avenge not for yourself, but let her give place for God to avenge for you, for vengeance is mine. Then the last place we are going to read is book of Genesis chapter 44 about the, uh, Joseph and his family. We, it's Genesis chapter 45. I will read only one, one to seven, then the last one, Genesis chapter 50, and we end it. It says, Genesis 45 verse one. Then Joseph could not restrain himself for all those who stood by him and he cried out. Make everyone go out of this room. This is the encounter that happened when the family came. So he tried to release people to go out so that he can speak word to word, face to face, confrontation to his family. Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him. Why Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He wanted to reveal himself to his brothers, to his family. And he wept around aloud. Oh my God. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh had it. You can imagine that the Joseph wept, that his voice echoed, that the Egyptians and the people in the community, they had the kind of weight when a, 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 a dimper, when a, a, a man is weeping, is groaning, is groaning, they, their, their voice was heard to the communities. You can imagine how loud it is. Verse three, then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, does my father still alive? But, these, but, but his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. Verse 4, and Joseph said to his brothers, please, come near to me. Instead of telling them, go, 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 he said, come near to me. As far as Joseph said, come near to me, means he has forgiven. Come near means give room for settlement. Come near means sit, let's call it. And let's quit whatever has done or whatever have come between us. That's the meaning of come near. If there is no room for settlement, there will be no be come near. Call your wife, say, woman, come. Tell your husband, come near, come, let's sit. Your neighbor, bring him into your room or go to his room, say, neighbor, come close. Come close means give room. Tell your friends, come near, come near. When you hear this message, when you listen to this teaching, tell whoever is involved, come near, come. Travel, pay price, go visit. Make it a meeting. Tell, come near, come near. Let's sit and call this thing a problem and bring it into separation. Let problem go. Let settlements come in. Let peace reign. That is what this guy did. Then verse four, and Joseph said to his brothers, please come near. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. You see, I don't know. Have you been sold? I don't know what have someone done to you. Is it up to this one? But if it's not up to this one, then you can see that whoever must have done, whoever must have hurt in this manner, yet he said, come, let's, let me tell you people what happened. Then he said in next verse, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourself because you sold me here for God sent me before you to prepare to preserve, to preserve your life. You see how he understand, he turned it. He told them, God make you to sold me here, to serve you. He did not remember how he was put into the pit. He did not remember how he was sent into the, to the, to the uh, Ishmaelite. He did not remember how they, 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 they hit him. He did not remember, oh my goodness, he forgot and forgave. I tell you the meaning of Konya means let's settle this. Let's end this. And he turned it. Instead of remembering, murmuring, complaining, lying, gossiping, try to family to, because if he begin to remember what these people did to him, the family, all of them will die there because his position is so high, high that if he remember it, all of them will die in his hand. He will lose all of them. So he has to look for a way to bring their, their, their attention down and then he can able to save them. Means we must endure, sacrifice, pay price to save life. That is what this guy did. Then after that, for these two years, and the family has been in the land, and there was still five years in which there will be neither wronging or harvesting. And God sent me before you to prepare a posterity for you in, in this earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. That is the end it. You can imagine such a thing. And finally, then in verse 14, 
Look at what Joseph did. Then he fell on his brother's Benjamin neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers, after, after that, his brothers talked with him. So they wept at each other. Reconciliation. When you are saying what is being done to you, you can cry. It's allowed. You can mourn. You can groan. It's allowed. But after then, let it end in that groaning. Let it end in that pouring of your tears. Let it end in that pouring your anger. That is where transparency is good. That is where owning up is good. That is where it's good to vomit. It's allowed to vomit. Vomit it. Air it up. Use it up. Open it. When you open it, you see the wound will take place. And you give room to save the people because when you, when you begin to tell the stories of what they did to you, the person that did it may be feeling bad. You may be pre feeling, you know, so, so, you know, I don't know how to say. It. Then you yourself give room to, to bring healing. Don't always, you do this. You do that, you add salt, you add pepper, and the person will be dying. So when you, you open up what they did to you, then the next thing is that, okay, I'll forgive him. Let's end it here. Don't stretch it so much like elastic. And you keep stretching, stretch stressing until the matter kill everybody around. No, when you stretch, you leave, you release. And give room for, 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 for reconciliation. And that is what God is asking for. And what this guy did by stretching, he opened up and he released. And the first thing he did, he went up, kissed his brother, Benjamin, kissed others. And means we are one and nothing can stop it. Finally, Genesis 50, verse 50. And um, the last verse was 50, verse 18, 19 and 20. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face and they said, behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for I am in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God made it for good in order to bring it about as it is in this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. I don't know if anyone have hurt you to this level. If it is, fine, learn from this person. What is the Bible for? Bible is a teacher. Bible is a guideline. Bible is a notebook. Bible is a expo. Bible is the answer to every problem. So whatever someone have done to you that occupies such an unforgiveness, now watch this encounter of this family. If your own, to, if your own heart have reached to this level, then learn what he did and the act is same. If, if he has never reached to this level, then judge yourself. You will not know that your own have never reached this level. Then why wouldn't you do what he did? Give room for reconciliation. Thank you for this today. That is what we have for today. And God bless you. Akach, could take over. Did anybody have a question? Or something to Thank you, Ma. You? Thank you for this teaching. Oh, OK. Do anybody have a question? Okay, go on. Unmute your voice and ask your question. Oh, Sister Des, you have a question? Sister Des, do you have a question? Sid, do you have a question? Okay. Okay. Adesa, you are trying to say something, but it's as it's it's like I can't hear you. Oh, your network is bad, so I can't hear you. Or maybe if if you can type your question, I can read it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can type it. Uh, and there's a, if you can hear me, uh, type your question on the chat box. I will read it out. Okay, Akachku, can you contribute just for one minute? Can you say something on this topic? Okay. Um, 
what I want to say, uh, uh, the topic on devices, it's a very big one, you know, it's a very big one because if you look into our world, you find out that so many things has been damaged as a result of one vice or the other in our life. Because when you were teaching, uh, I think I reflected on some of us aspects of my life, you know, so many things that you, I must have damaged due to anger, unlike uh, unlike what uh, Joseph did with his brothers and the rest of them when he was offended, when he was sold, and he had the opportunity to retaliate back, but he was able to control himself. I think that weeping, David, uh, uh, Joseph wept, you know, when he wept with his brothers and the rest of them, is like pouring out that anger. But he mm. poured it out in a negative way, which is all about having that self-control. You know, mm. it's high time we pray for that aspect of the Holy Spirit, being able to control ourselves. Because I've been in that situation whereby I want to react, and the Spirit of God will say, no, don't react, don't mm. react. But you see yourself going contrary to what the Spirit is telling you. And at the end mm. of the day, you will regret your actions. Though what what uh, what uh, 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 resulted to that, uh, or what caused that action is justifiable, but the action made everything, you know, to turn against you. You begin to regret your action. You'll be like, why did I do this? Why did I act like this? So that is why this teaching on the vices becomes very important because we need to start considering some of aspect of our life that has mm. caused a lot of problems, like this anger of a thing. Honestly, it, we take it lightly, but anger is very, very dangerous. It has destroyed a lot of homes. It has destroyed a lot of relationships. You know, it has broken father and son relationship, husband and wife relationship. It has destroyed mm -hmm. a lot of friends. So you find out that we shouldn't be taking it lightly when we talk about vices. And something that we need to go before the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Help mm -hmm. me on this of, on, of my life. So I think it's very, very encouraging to me. Praise God. Yeah. Another, so thing I want, uh, another thing I want to talk is about parents and the children. You see, okay. I don't know how a woman will have children and your child will offend you. And you will, out of anger, you curse the child. Out of the anger, you do away with the child. You forget your nine months. It is true that these children can make one offense. The same thing with the, the father. You will curse the child. You will throw the child like a vagabond because of what you do. But they doesn't remember that the attitude of these children may result what they learn in the school, in universities, or mm. what is going on today in the society. They forget uh. that somebody among their vicinity may be a witchcraft that make the child to behave that way. So the parent mm. doesn't have room to sort out what makes this child to be like that. And these have made them to lose their children. Many of them are being sent outside on that cause, on that anger, and they become vagabond. And many of them are being killed. Mm. Many of them have turned to useless today. So parents, exactly. what happened to your children? Why are they behaving like this? What happened to them? Nothing happens in vain. So these are the things you see what unforgiveness. Because of what that child, maybe the, the child come and stole your money. Are you getting me? When he stole the money, then yeah. what is The money is wasted. The money is stolen. Is that why you send the child to gamble wasted? You enjoy it and look for a way to bring the child. Because the child may be under a spell. Are you getting me? Something may, okay. For example, one of my sons, when he was studying, in his third school, in the third uh, final year, this guy, I don't know what he used the school fees to do. The next thing, he, he shortened the money. He didn't let me know. And this have caused him not to finish his school. And will I kill him? He, I, I, because when, by the time he told me he's late, and the, the remaining one, what did he do? He said, oh, let me go and put it and gambling so that the money will increase and they, and they become complete for my school fees. And he now put it in Gambri, the money finally ends. The very big amount of money. And now, that is the end of the school. Before you could let me know, the, it, it is, it, the school have sent him away. So this kind of thing, when it happens, you see parents who go so angry, he squat to be angry. But at the end, what do you do? Bring that child back and, okay, what do we do? Bring the baby in the table. Let's think of what next we should do. Now, this thing, what else? So, but if he doesn't handle it, you will, this, you will throw the person, you will talk to the person again, and that thing will make the child to, to be useless. So, I, I need to talk on parents' matter. 
And so in my own side, the way I handle it is what is helping me today. So there are things that happen. We must begin to learn that nothing happens in vain. Something conspires for things to happen. And we must learn how to settle and bring things in a table and make it you know, a settled matter so that we can move further. If not, I tell you, relationship we cannot stand. Marriage cannot stand. Community cannot stand. Uh, uh, kindred cannot stand. You see, even yeah. if friends cannot stand. So these are why God is calling us to learn how to, to, to settle things when, when it was still early stage that we leave it to go so uh, bad. So this is what we have for today. And um, let us pray. And so, sorry, Ma, before we pray, excuse me, mm -hmm. Ma. Before we pray, I think uh, this aspect of uh, a parent needs to be addressed properly because um I've, I've i've sometimes i've sat down and looked into it i asked myself why is uh, things getting worse and worse every day it's because we've uh, not been able to go to the spirit of god to manage things the proper way for instance you see some parents whenever their child offends them they will be like ah your son or your two your children will do this thing what are mm -hmm. they doing they are extending that action or the mm. cause to the next generation. And mm. the implication of this is this. The, the next generation that might not have been born when mm. that thing is saying, you are innocent, has mm. been a victim of what somebody did. And it's as a result of someone's anger that they mm. became a victim. But if the parents, like you said, understood that this guy's action is prepared by a spirit, because... Nobody was born um, and he was named a vagabond. Nobody was mm -hmm. born. Just like the parents say, it cost, cost uh, the, the next generation who are not yet born. Now you mm -hmm. find out that, that that generation, when they come up, and they will start misbehaving again. And uh, mm -hmm. their parents will also lay a cost on the, the next generation. So do you mm -hmm. see how we transfer causes upon causes upon causes to the generation unborn? So, but mm -hmm. if the parent is in the spirit of God and is able to manage that... Uh, aspect of his or her life and you see this child misbehaving instead of extending that misbehavior to the next generation you can mm. be able to put a stop to that by mm. one understanding that this child is doing this thing not because he wants to do it but there is a, mm. because every action has a spirit behind it i've come to understand that every action has a spirit behind it that propels you to do that thing. you know like you see some people they will tell you ah i don't like this thing i'm doing but i don't know how to stop it yeah. and it's real it's it, that is to show you there is an action there is a spirit pushing them in their heart they don't like it it's but they true. see themselves like there are people that are smoking, not because they like to smoke, but they see themselves, you know, being pushed by a force that they cannot control. Mm. It pushes them to go and smoke. They don't want to smoke, but a force is pushing them to go and smoke. So there are mm. spirits behind actions we do. Mm -hmm. And those actions have consequences, yes, of the truth. It has. So, but as a parent, as a mentor, as a as an elder, because we're not just talking about parents here. We're talking about mentors. If you're a pastor, expect that people that, you, that people who are pastoring will offend you. They will push you to the wall to cause mm. you to live one cause or the other. You know, it doesn't make sense. Jesus That's called us to this. As a parent, you are there to nurture and bring out a good thing. You know, parenting is not about giving bed. It's mm. about helping this child to hmm. come out from that bad aspect of his life to the good aspect of his life. So when yeah. a child acted uh, badly towards you as a parent, hmm. it has, it's a signal to you that it's an area that you need to work on this child. It's an area that you need to help this child to come out. So instead yeah. of laying costs on him or on the generation I'm born, try to hmm. bridge that gap. Hmm. Try to stop it there. Try to, you know, by the Spirit of God, ask the Spirit, how do I put a correction to that? And you find out, I think mm. the world will start becoming a better place if we can yeah. stop laying off that cost. You know, it's very, very bad in parenting. It's very, very bad in the life of so many parents. And I see so many, you know, people, they will be like, ah, it will never be well with you. Your children will do it to you. It's very <laughs> bad. You are not just affecting the person that offended you. You are affecting your next generation. We does not give a good account of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, that thing, that thing happened to me. You know, I always use myself as an example. When I was young, my life, my attitude is horrible. So my, my mom, my, my dad, they always cost me. They almost, my, sometimes my mom will be beating me. I say, you will die. This thing I'm doing, your children will do it to you. 
So, but when I entered into this school, when I started reconciling with God, God sent me to my parents and I kneeled down to them and asked them to forgive me. And my dad, before he died, he forgave me, he prayed for me as my mom. But you know what? When my children begin to grow, one of my daughters, I see my character in her. You know what I started doing? I started mourning. I started praying. I say, God, do not kill me for this character of this girl because I see myself in her. Then what I always do, I'll always be praying. I say, God, if, if I start praying that prayer, eh, people around me will say, who beat you? I will be crying. I will be mourning. Why am I crying? My cry is, God, please do not let this girl to be like me. You say that you will forgive me and forgive my generation. Please forgive me and forgive her. So now, because I've entered into this school, now I've seen this, because when I come into the school, the, the Lord revealed the spirit that is dealing with me. So now I now understand that that thing I was doing, that life I was living, that character is a spirit, is a demon. But my parents was not spiritual enough to know. So by the time I come across this school of the spirit, I now understand when God revealed to me the spirit. I now say, wow, so this is what dealt with me. Then I started praying ahead that it's not going to affect my children. So because of that course, that thing delayed that time, I see it coming. I started praying ahead of the time. I started handling it spiritually. I started taking love to handle it. I started, you know, I bring it home. I bring it as a lesser level. And you see what God is doing? God is perfecting it. God is, God is answering. God is doing it perfectly because I, as you said, he follows generation to generation. So I, I, I understood it and I caught it in my own time. And it's not going to go further, further, further anymore. So these are what we teach parents that we, we must know that what comes around us is not what we ask for. And when it comes, don't give it room to extend it, cut it by saying, God, it's not what I ask for. And that for the fact it has come, trash it and end it in your time and let not cross to another generation. Thank you for today and God bless you for joining. Father, we uh, thank you for today. Lord, we give you all the glory. Father, we are asking for healing. We are asking for deliverance. We are asking for your help. We are asking for you to give our communities, our society, our families, our friends, our marriages, our, you know, our children, bring peace unto us. You see, this unforgiveness is a cancer. Father, in any area it has affected our life. Lord, please come with your healing power. Come with your exposure. Expose it and bring the, the necessary healing, necessary injection, necessary medication for it, oh God. Give us grace to pay sacrifice. Give us grace to forgive. Give us grace to pay price that when people do something to us, we'll overlook it and keep going. That we can't do it by our own strength. We can't do it by our own might. It is when the grace comes, we can be able to do it. Father, we did, we had what uh, Joseph did to you. We want to be like Joseph. That grace, that so that we can even act better than Joseph when such a thing comes to us. Thank you for answering that. Thank you for working on us. We are still working on our children. We are still working on our husband and our marriages. We are still working on our, in our community, in our society. We are still working in our ministry, in our churches. Continue to work. Do not be, do not be tired of working in us. It is your work to work in us. And as we give you our will, continue to work until you perfect us. Thank you for answering this prayer. And Father, ask the O Lord for the people that are watching and the people that will join later, let this message be a deliverance, a key. To, their, to ease up their problems, oh God. Blessed be thy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.